and welcome to this week's episode. Today's company are a civil engineering company. No idea what that means? Well, you may not have heard of Custain before, but you'll probably have benefited from the work that they do. They design, build and manage huge projects all over the UK, whether it's helping to ensure we've got clean water, designing and building railways, airports or roads. The sorts of projects they run improve the lives of millions of people across the UK every day. Their work even addresses the United Nations sustainable goals for the future. You want to see what it takes to be part of their team? A team which you could be part of in the future. Let's go and meet some of the engineers. What's your name? I'm uh, Malcolm Bell. My name is Akib. Hi, my name's Shane McDonald. Hi, my name is Joel McFarlane. And what's your job title? My job title is Graduate Civil Site Engineer. I'm a Project Manager. My title is Project Director and also Partnership Director for Costing. My job title is Senior Engineer. And what is a Senior Engineer? I like to describe my role as bringing what's in the drawings bringing that uh, into the real world and making that happen with the construction side of things. As a project director, you're responsible for overseeing, um, so setting the strategy, setting the vision for a, for a project, and then really just supporting the team as they go through that project and giving them everything they need, the resource, to make the job a success. It can mean different things. For a principal contractor, I think being a site engineer means um, having to coordinate all the subcontractors, um, occasionally checking house built, providing some setting out levels, coordinates, um, managing the free week programme and then assisting with other disciplines, a lot of times like lifting and temporary work, things like that. So you're like you're like across a lot of different teams then working in your role? Yeah, when you're working for as a site engineer for a principal contractor as opposed to a subcontractor, it's more coordinating all the subcontractors and making sure the programmes Everything's flowing in place, subcontracts are working too close to each other, health and safety is managed on site. We get involved in all aspects of the project, sort of coordinating um, the design, the construction elements, how we're going to price it up, so all the commercial elements, engaging with the client and any other stakeholders, residents that might be affected by our works, people who use um, the land around where we're going to work, just to make sure that we get all their buy-in and engagement uh, what we're proposing to do and, and hopefully we don't upset anybody and we can get all their support to help us get the job done. So if I um, followed you around all day, what sort of things would I see you doing? Lots of talking, either on the phone or answering emails, just trying to make sure that people have the right information that they need to do their task. At the moment, uh, there's a lot of meetings, as you would expect, probably at the higher level you do get a lot of the meetings uh, and making sure that we are doing what is required to keep the client happy. So on days when I'm on a construction site, you'll see me um, get there super early, meet with all the all the guys and girls who are working on our project and then all the different gangs will go to their work site and as the day progresses you'll see me probably uh, go around to check with each site, make sure they have what they need. Uh, you might see me mark something on the ground for them to tell them okay this is where you need to dig or you might see me go out and measure something to make sure it's been built correctly. Taking a lot of photographs for site diaries, <laughs> um, drafting up a lot of permits, doing a lot of CAT scanning, checking for cables. Making sure that we have the right version of information because it's quite easy how how much people can have something in their desk drawer that is suddenly out of date but they still use it. Um, and then just sat in front of my computer, filling around with programmes, working on AFX, that kind of stuff. You'll see me possibly walking around with drawings or with an iPad, um, making sure the job that's on the plan is being built safely, is being built correctly. And just really trying to coordinate everything, make sure everybody's got that latest up-to-date information and that we are communicating that out to everybody. It's a lot of meeting with the teams, making sure I've given them everything they need, making sure that they have the resource, have the staff. Sometimes when I'm in the office, there'll be a lot of planning going on, looking at drawings, thinking about how are we going to build this, okay, what permissions do we need, who do we need to contact? So a lot of um, planning, uh, sitting around the drawing, and marking it up, drawing it up, thinking about how to build it. Currently, I am based in an office um, because we're in the design phase of the project. But once we are into delivery, it is very much a, a mix of both. So going out onto the site to see how the work's progressing. Do they look right? How is it all going? Looking at any problems that people may have and then trying to come up with solutions or who we need to speak to to come up with the right solutions to 
to fix those issues. Speaking to a lot of foremen, getting told off by a lot of foremen. <laughs> yeah, that kind of stuff every day. Yeah, when it's not working for the subcontractor, it's your fault, isn't it? <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Engineer gets blamed for everything. It's kind of what I've learned. <laughs> so what sort of projects are you involved in at the moment? So what Cross are involved in at the moment, we have a job we're working on at Tesla's roundabout in, in Sunderland on the A19. And then we're also just starting a job as part of a, a package of work. And we've got three schemes all around Newcastle and the A1, adding additional lanes really to ease that congestion. So what skills do you think you use most in your role day to day? At the moment, my role is all about people skills. It's all about getting the best out of my team and putting the team together in the first place. So it's all about people skills. It's all about uh, communicating well, uh, setting that vision, the leadership. Uh, setting the behaviours for the team to follow up. So I still do use uh, quite a bit of maths. Um, I have to think about, right, if we need to build a certain, uh, let's say a bridge, for example, I'll have to think about uh, how much concrete we might need, how much steel we might need, and think about the best way to bring in those resources, make sure we're not wasting any material. For seeing where, where the subcontract's going to be moving um, and try to see problems, try to be on the ball. So you need to be flexible. I think that's one of the big things. You need to be flexible because things change rapidly in the engineering business. You've got to be flexible, adaptable. And being comfortable with change because you can go and build five roads that on paper look exactly the same and the conditions can be exactly the same in that they are through green fields, but actually everyone will be massively different. And you can always guarantee that every day or every week there will be something that you hadn't anticipated that comes up and you have to deal with a response to that and that's a bit that I really enjoy but you can't be phased by that you have to just sort of go with it and go right what are we going to do about it. Setting out is actually a, quite a weird one because although when coming from like a civil engineering background at university you do tend to do a little bit of setting out and surveying um, but not an awful lot and then coming and work as a site engineer and it's a massive part of the job um, so getting that under your belt after a couple of months working here and then using it every day is huge in the first first few years. Uh, their personal skills, um, lots of those as well, having to talk to people of all different, I might be talking to managers in some places, uh, I might be talking to um, the guys who are operating the machines, the big machines and talking about how they can do their jo job best. It's definitely people facing, so you, you have to have a, a good technical background. You can gauge when people are telling you the right sort of things or, or have your own intuition as to when something maybe isn't. But people skills is absolutely key. Uh, a lot of these jobs we've got to get the best out of our people and my job is to make that happen I suppose. So how did you end up in this role? I always liked the, the maths and the physics and it was almost engineering was just a natural career. Start with Cleveland Bridge building uh, bridges. Generally although they do a lot of the world I stuck into the UK and Ireland and did a lot of work there. Uh, before moving to, to Costain and they were Costain for 15 years. So like uh, lots of engineers, um, I like building things um, when I was younger, connects. In school as well, I found physics uh, the most interesting, mainly because it made sense to me. <laughs> I could see how friction worked, for example. I could see how gravity worked. Yeah, that got me really interested in trying to figure out how forces and how different mechanics work. I had a place at university to do aeronautical engineering and then realised that I didn't really trust the electrical side and I wasn't very good at it. So you couldn't see it, you couldn't feel it and it could kill you. Didn't didn't really like the sound of that. And before I went to university to, to study that course, I took a year out and ended up working for Metrolink in Manchester who operate the trams. And as part of the year in industry scheme that I did, you had to spend a week with every department that that company had and when I went out with the civil engineers it just felt far more intuitive. I got it so I was quite lucky in that I was there in a, a really hot summer and a lot of the the rails were all expanding and bursting so trams were sort of having to stop running because they couldn't run over the the rails because they'd all become unattached and we went to look at them and I could spot it, I could understand it, I could see what had gone on and it just felt far more comfortable so yeah that was me, I swapped my degree. When I was younger I was always really interested in design and I was quite good at maths so I kind of went down the engineering route, kind of standard for most civil engineers but then went to university, did civil and structural engineering in Newcastle um, and then did a couple of de design placements, a consultant called Jacobs um, and I quite Quite enjoyed it, but wasn't quite active enough for me. So I decided that I'd, the contracting route, so I tried that out and it was uh, 
applied for a job at Costain, got a, a role on site and then I haven't looked back from there really. And really I, I started off as a site engineer, so out there setting out, um, bashing the pegs and setting all the levels and just progressed up through that really to, to where I am now. And again, one of the great things about engineering was opportunities all over the place. In 15 years I've been at home for probably five years of that and the other 10 I've worked in London, in Wales, in Ireland and all around the UK. And then uh, bridges. Um, I, I thought bridges were cool. They're something that uh, people use every day. And yeah, I wanted to contribute to society by building the world around us. So it sounds very grand, but um, yeah. And, and you do get that sense of reward as well once you complete a project. Well, you think you're, you're building highways and roads. How many thousands of people are benefiting from that on a, on a daily basis? Absolutely, absolutely. Yep. Uh, what's the best bit about your job then? The number of different people from different backgrounds and different mindsets that I get to work with. It's great to have something at the end. So it's great to have built something and to have that. I built that. I was part of the team who built that. I get to work with um, people who are um, environmental focused. So they always make sure that we're doing things that's good for the environment. Yeah, I would say that's the best bit is this year you wouldn't, you'd be surprised, you'd be amazed at how many different people contribute to uh, building the project. And it's learning from everybody, it's understanding what uh, everybody wants to get out of the project. It's not just about building something, it's about building something that's going to last, uh, last a long time, uh, something that's going to benefit uh, the environment and yeah, bring, bring, bring real change, long lasting change. It's a challenge, uh, nothing is easy, but that's good. It's, it's day to day, everything everything changes. So I enjoy that change, I enjoy the people, which is, has to be fundamental for me, is enjoying the team. I'd say the high speed, the, the pressure of it. Probably, I, I get a bit of a thrill from being like at the back end of the supply chain, you know, from everyone, all the design work's gone, gone in prior to um, it getting to site. And then you've got the subcontractors that work underneath you. And every every decision you make has it's quite, it's quite high risk. If you do something wrong, it can cost a lot of money. If you do something right, there's poten potential benefit there as well, which is quite like it drives me to, to work fast and hard every day. Like, and keeps me, keeps me on, on site and busy. Uh, the variety. So the fact that there is just no two jobs are ever the same, no two days are ever the same. And I love that. And just that interaction with people and actually knowing that you're making a difference. So as much as people quite often don't like what we do or see it as impacting the environment, we try really hard every day to absolutely minimise our impact to the environment or look for ways that we can improve it. The places so you do see, you can see the world and the, the opportunities are endless. Just knowing that you're making that difference and that improvement for the infrastructure for, for the area. So particularly on that scheme as well, um, we managed to unlock a big section of the county that had been economically constrained because the transport routes in and out weren't good enough and as soon as we've opened it up even now you can still hear about the investment opportunities that are happening and it's all off the back of what we did so knowing that you're making that long-term sustainable difference is really rewarding i really enjoy that and it's, it's also good i think because you meet a lot of different people as engineers you need so many different roles which require different skills and that's the really interesting bit. You don't have to be a mass boffin to be an engineer. It's all sorts of roles and anybody can be an engineer, which is great. And what have you been doing with this today? Uh, we're trying to make a bridge between the water because the tsunamis wiped their whole bridge out. So we didn't, um, we don't have any like any bridges to get across from place to place. So we, uh, we've came up with ideas to use to, um, make bridges for them to get across in cars and things. Ah, to make them a bit more like stronger yeah. and stuff. Yeah. That's amazing. Hi, hi, relax. We just want to ask you a few questions. Lamborghini or Ferrari? Ooh, I'm gonna go with Ferrari. What's your favourite food? My favourite food is probably ribs, barbecue ribs. Why did you end up as an engineer? I became an engineer like many uh, engineers because I like building things. When I was younger, uh, about your age, um, I like playing with Kinects. Lego I didn't play much with, but Kinects was my thing. I like building things, making things happen, and um, yeah, I still get to do that now, more or less. <laughs> what do you like doing on a weekend, usually? On the weekend, um, 
Well, these days it's pretty quiet on the weekend, but normally um, I go to the gym, try to exercise, um, catch up with a few friends, go out for some food. Um, try to get more into squash as well, playing squash. It's going to be my new hobby, hopefully. What would you be most scared of? Finding a tiger in your back garden or swimming with sharks? Ooh, good question. Well, I've actually, uh, I've actually swam with sharks, baby reef sharks, because I do scuba diving. So I'm not so scared of that. Probably uh, finding a tiger <laughs> then, because I don't know what that's like. Where is the best place you've ever visited? Wow, very good question. The best place I've ever visited. I'm going to have to go with Zambia, which is a country in uh, Africa. Who would you like to meet from history? Good question, good question. Uh, Muhammad Ali, the boxer. What was your favourite lesson at school and why? It's going to have to be physics. Um, it was the most interesting, got to learn about the real world, um, how things work and why, why even simple things like electricity, um, where that comes from. What are you most proud of? Well, since this is a call about engineering, I'm most proud of, um, in the first job I worked on, we built a little park for um, kids to play on in, a little, uh, in one of my projects. And it was a small little park, um, but I got to work on the project from beginning to end. And it was just really great, it's something I'm really proud of, to have built a park that kids like yourselves can play on and families can go. Uh, so that's probably what I'm most proud of in my work. If you could go back in time to your 10 year old self and give them a bit of advice, what would it be? Work hard, but play harder. You'll get more, you'll get more enjoyment of earning something than you will uh, from just having it given to you. So work hard, but make sure to play harder. Thank you for your time. You're very welcome. It was great talking to you and, and really good questions too. <laughs> well, there you go. Have you ever thought that people building a road might actually be really excited about the work that they're doing? I mean, you might think that getting a job is about making money, but you can see from the engineers today that that isn't the case. They know that they're making a difference to thousands of people, not just now, but into the future as well. They enjoy being part of that team. And there are so many opportunities for any one of you watching this program to be a part of that team when you leave education. What's even better, they'll pay you really well to do it. Anyway, until next time when we meet another engineering company that's based in the Northeast doing projects near you. See you later.